Hello. Um, so here we are at last. You don't really get to see us very much, do you? We don't really chat to you on the web and things like that. So, um, yeah, we're really pleased for your questions. And um, this question is from Rena and Cerritos. Is that how you say it? Cerritos. It might be Cerritos. But Cerritos. Oops. Rena in Cerritos or Cerritos or in California anyway. And she says, what were your influences to the music you are creating for the next album? Wow. Well, we kind of think everything, really. You know, we've always got a real... Bag of influences. Yeah, a bit of glam, a bit of glam rock, which is very English, I guess, isn't it? It's not really... Um, but yeah, lots of things. Nature, nighttime, disco, electronic... European electronic music, stuff like that, lots of things really. Okay, another question from um, Stevie Boy in the English Channel. Where's the English Channel? Somewhere. Guernsey, Jersey, is that the English Channel? Yeah. yeah. Right. He wasn't very specific, was he? It's a bit wet, certainly. After the perfection of Black Cherry, you are feeling, are you feeling a bit pressured with this next album or are the songs rolling off the tongue quite easily? Well, we don't really roll many things off the tongue. Well, we do sometimes, but I think. That's some, a bit mean. Sometimes we do. Um, <laughs> I think there's always pressure, but it's not pressure from what you've done before, it's the pressure of what you might do next, really, isn't it? This comes from Alexander Barre in Brooklyn, New York. Is there any reference in the music to an energy or force within or outside of us? I think when you make music, you, it, there is always something, and uh, it, there is a part of you that is kind of, you step out of yourself. Yeah, so maybe, I don't know whether that's another force or what. But I guess it probably is, yeah. It's sort of a religious question, isn't it, really? Sort of. Is it? I don't know, it sounds a bit... I wonder what he's into. Yeah. Tom Bingley from Stafford asks, Last time, your band looked great. Will you be working with them again? Or will it be a different setup this time? No, we are working with them again. Because we like them. Not because they look great, because we just like them. Don't we? Yeah. And they sound great. They're good musicians. And I'm glad you think they look great as well. What's the deal with all the dogs? Dave Winnegar, Lynn, Main USA, wants to know. All the dogs. Well, there's. As do as <laughs> there is quite a lot of dogs, you're right. I don't know. Um, dogs. Wolves. I suppose wolves kind of um, represent freedom, kind of wildness, strength, sex. Yeah, they're kind of a metaphor for all those human things. And the nice pets too. Sam from London says the video for Train sparked a nationwide burlesque revival. Blimey, well, I don't know about that, but I guess maybe they just coincided. Where did you get the idea from? Well, well this girl, um, I don't know, no, what did the idea? The idea came from sort of my frustration with tit tasseling because it was something I thought was rather wonderful and, and ridiculous as well. And um, I'd always wanted to try out doing it, so I've never mastered it, I can't do it. And so we um, looked for this girl um, called Modesty, well, we didn't look for her, we auditioned some people to who we thought might be able to tit tassel, and we auditioned loads and loads and loads of people, and nobody could do it apart from this one girl called Modesty Blaze, and um, she ended up in the video, and um, she was already doing a lot of her own stuff in theatres and um, clubs and stuff, and anyway, she's now she's gone on to, um, she's got her own production in in the West End and stuff, so 
Um, we had her performing live quite a lot with us on stage as well. So it's just started from a kind of fascination of tit tasseling, one of those ancient arts like, you know, swallowing cigarettes or, um, you know, it comes from all those old time music hall and cabaret and stuff. Wendell G from LA says, I always think Goldfrapp are a modern psychedelic band. The music, the videos, the imagery. Do you think you are psychedelic? Do you have psychedelic influences? Yes, I think we do. I yeah, think you like it. psychedelia is, obviously it's an idea that comes from the 60s, but from they got it from India, I think. I think that's the root of it, which is a sort of non-Western spirituality, maybe, um, to do with trance-like states, possibly, getting you closer to heaven. And the idea that music can send you into a trance and can get you somewhere else, I think we're very akin to that idea of being taken outside ourselves with music. Will, Hi. Betty, this is Betty. Hello, Betty. Betty um, from Switzerland, she is. Um, she says, Will, have you ever tried singing on a track? Uh, I have tried to make you sing on a track, but you won't do it, will you? It's sort of self protection and protection of others. <laughs> Safety first, I think, is the motto. So um, maybe one day when I'm very deaf, I'll try it. Nick Lawrence, in fact, in Southampton, says, what is your favourite remix of a Goldfrapp song? Maboose. Yeah, what's that mean? What does Maboose mean? I don't know. Can you write and tell us, Nick? What are the criteria against which you judge how successful you are? That's two questions. Um, I think the, my favourite remix of a Goldfrapp track is probably Graham Massey's Cro-Magnum mix of human was it oh yeah which was if you haven't heard it it's worth digging it out it's quite extreme i liked it a lot <laughs> um <clears throat> and as to how you judge how successful you are you 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 only got yourself haven't you really oh uh, this is a good one from david malham in swindon why oh why don't you have the song lyrics in the sleeve notes yes david I'm not very happy with you because you obviously haven't been looking very hard, have you? And uh, the song lyrics are in uh, the sleeve notes. So get your specs on and... Um, get reading. Look a little harder in the future, OK? How did it feel opening for Duran Duran when all the hype was about their reunion but you knew you were cooler? <laughs> it's from Martin in London. <laughs> Well, that's very flattering of you, Martin. Um, it felt good. Yeah. Scary, but good. And I think it really helped us for our, when we, you know, when we did our own gigs, because that, that was the first kind of really huge kind of gig that we've, we ever did, which was really scary. And it's always weird doing support for anybody, you know, whether Duran Duran or whoever, you know. Um, but I think it really helped us when we came to do sort of festivals and, um, yeah, so it, it was good for us, very good. And they were nice too, weren't they? They, were they nice made it very guys, easy yeah. for us. Will you still be making records in 20 years' time together? If so, how do you imagine they'll sound? They'll probably sound really out of tune because I'll be deaf and probably won't be able to sing very well. And um, we'll, we'll probably one. be barking mad by that point. It'll be a clarinet duet by that point. So there might be a bit sort of a bit kind of stop starty and a bit <laughs> a bit rickety you and know. short and short yeah because we'll no it will seem span. like a really long time but actually it wouldn't have been will it so they, yeah they'll probably be really short yeah or maybe they won't be maybe they'd be like we would just ramble and ramble and ramble and ramble because like, that's what old people do isn't it noodle on they just ramble forever knitting and very slow Me and Mrs. Monkey Hands love hairy trees so much we had it as our first dance at our wedding. Aww. What would your first dance be? Or what was it, if you are married? 
I'm not married. We're not married? And my first dance would be... Moldy old dance? <laughs> <laughs> I think mine might be. <laughs> I don't know. I've never really thought about that, actually. Monkey hands. Why are you called monkey hands? Me and Mrs. Monkey Hands. That sounds like a song title, doesn't it? Me and Mrs. Monkey Hands. Yeah. <clears throat> Hairy trees, though. That's, That's kind a... of a weird one to dance to. And da, to get da, married da, da, da. to. Was it kind of pagan, your wedding? And sort of weird. In a forest, do you think, maybe? Outdoors. Gold frap have a dark and saucy sexy vibe going on are you really sexual deviants or are you pussycats says xanthia and pittsburgh well i think you can be both <laughs> i think there's nothing deviant about being a cat deviant or catty about being deviant i think it's all one thing really so i think the answer is both i th i agree it's nice to be a pussycat and deviant if Alison or Will could star in a remake of one of their favourite films, what would it be and what character would they like to play, says Stu from Hadfield. Ooh. Um, I think I'd like to be Jonathan E in Rollerball. I'd like to be that girl Daryl Hannah plays in Blade Runner. Pris. Is that her name? I think so. The one who does somersaults and picks eggs out of boiling hot water. Yeah. That one, yeah. And dies at the age of three years old. Yeah. If you could be any animal you wanted to be, what would it be, says Tanya in London? Oh, I think I'd like to be an elephant, because they're much bigger. I'd like to be um, a sloth. Because I think they're lovely and they can swim underwater, which is rather nice. Mm. And climb up trees very well. And they kind of take everything very slowly and easily, which I don't. So that would be a nice change. <laughs> <laughs> if you could change one thing that would make golf rap better, what would it be? That's such a mental question, Mel, in Leeds. Yeah, I mean, if... You Make could... golf rap better. Well, we could always be better. One can always be better. <laughs> what one thing would make oh. you better? Talent. Talent. <laughs> An injection of inspiration from... Make golf rap better. Leeds? I don't know, loads of things. Probably. Yeah, if you've got any ideas, please let us know, because that'd be quite useful. Is it flattering that a lot of big pop acts and songwriters are using large elements of the golf rap sound? That's from Gareth Medina in Manchester. Yeah, I don't really care that much, do you? Not really, no. I don't think it matters, and... I don't think it matters, you know, people always inspired or nick things from other people and you know you put things out into the world and that's what happens and it doesn't matter it doesn't really matter i think if someone actually pinches a actual melody or you know and doesn't credit you for it i think that's different i think if someone's influenced by it or you know who cares really at the end of the day i don't think it's sort of i mean it matters i think if it's like when the, the race thing you know when a lot of white artists were making um, a lot of money from black artists to music because of the politics. I think that matters, but I mean, you know, we're just all musicians out there and, you know, we'll nick them back pretty soon. No doubt. When they have a new idea. What is your favourite song to sing in the shower? Says Dan Fullard from Wolverhampton. I don't sing in the shower, really. Don't you? Uh -huh. It's very social. I don't... I don't have a specific song to sing in the shower. Sorry. No.